If you've been lifting for any length of time, undoubtedly you've heard someone say something along the lines of, you got to do your compounds. Compounds are where it's at. You're not going to get big and strong doing these teeny tiny little isolation exercises because these teeny tiny little isolation exercises are you know, for weak people and small people and because they train small muscles and you use small weights, they're not going to give you big progress, right? A little bit of hyperbole there, but many of you have probably heard some kind of version of that. So is there truth to that? And really, what is the difference between these two things aside from the obvious? Which is better and why? Well, if we start just from that question of which is better, which is better, of course, depends on the context, right? If I want to train my biceps, there's no more specific way to do that than to do some kind of isolation exercise, some kind of curl. The same thing for my triceps. Generally speaking, I would want to do some kind of triceps extension, let's say, as opposed to a bench press. But where are the downsides to that, right? So the first upside to isolation is, you know, we have an increased amount of specificity, right? But along with that benefit comes a decreased amount of total stuff stimulated. Meaning if I'm doing a triceps extension uh, and I'm not doing a bench press, I am at that moment not also training my chest and my front delts and other muscles that do that. And with compound, it's kind of the opposite, right? Like in general, we have a decreased amount of specificity and we have an increased amount of total stuff recruited, right? So again, bench press versus triceps extension. In the context of a bench press, we have our chest muscles, we have our front delts, we have our coracobrachialis, we have our triceps, right? All those different heads. And so with something that is inherently more compound, we get more total things done, but each of those things in isolation is doing less total work on a set to set basis, perhaps, than something that is more isolation. So let's just say on an arbitrary scale of one to 10, if I'm doing a triceps extension exercises, that's gonna be like a 10 from the perspective of I'm just stimulating the triceps, nothing else. You might argue that you know your pecs and your lats are holding your shoulders down, right? But we don't really need to consider that in terms of the actual effective stimulus. But when we talk about the bench press, how you perform the bench press will have a massive impact on where in that scale you fall from a triceps perspective. So for example, if you're a very triceps dominant presser, perhaps you get to a point where it's maybe like 50% of your press is triceps, 50% is pecs. That's probably unlikely, but let's just say, you know, for the sake of argument that, you know, the bench press is the five, if, is a, a, on a scale of one to 10 is a five out of 10 for triceps specificity. And the rope triceps extension is a 10 out of 10 in terms of specificity. Which of those is better is really dependent on what you're trying to do and where in the session you are and, and sort of what you actually need from a stimulus perspective. So let's look at two different examples here in terms of when each of these might be more appropriate. Let's take example number one is a pro bodybuilder, right? One of the biggest bodybuilders in the world, whoever you want to pick, pick them. That is an individual who is at such a level of advancement where in every single exercise that they do, they are trying to be as specific as possible because if they're not as specific as possible and they can't clearly identify a rate limiter in the exercise, and the exercise is just kind of like this mishmash blend of a hundred different things, well, then that person might be in a situation where not only are they distributing stress, high amounts of stress to a lot of different tissues, but perhaps those individual fibers of those individual muscles are not being stimulated enough on a per set basis at least to where we would say that that's an efficient stimulus or that's an efficient exercise selection. So this is a big reason I think that you see a lot of high level bodybuilders choosing these more isolation based exercises, right? And if you're trying to grow specific muscles, that kind of selection makes sense. Of course, there are exceptions to that, but if we think about the other side of the spectrum, let's say um, you know you are uh, someone who's never lifted before in their life, you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, whatever, and you start lifting. Do you need the degree of specificity that a high-level bodybuilder would need? 
No, right? Or at least hopefully not, right? That would be pretty weird, right? So compound exercises are great ways to get enough of a stimulus to a bunch of different muscle groups simultaneously to where although each individual stimulus to the pecs, to the front delts, to the triceps is on average lower than it would be in, a, in an isolation setting, that because that person is so new to the gym and because they're so new to the stimulus, even just a little bit of stimulus to each of those individual parts can give them a disproportionate amount of progress. And this is oftentimes why beginners do really well with just a lot of compound based things, right? Exercises, which in essence don't have a single rate limiter, but perhaps two or three or even four, because again, the amount of stimulus that they need is very, very low. Now, of course, do we see bodybuilders doing some combination of these? Yes, but uh, I would make the argument that a majority of bodybuilders in a majority of their training sessions are sticking to this side of the equation, at least in what we'll call the sort of newer age of bodybuilding where people are being a little bit more mindful about their training and they're not just sort of bashing their heads into a barbell um, you know, for, for two hours a day, six days a week. So overall, each of these has an upside and a downside, and which of them you choose and when you choose them is subject not only to change, but is also just subject to your individual scenario. And this question of like, which is better is a little bit pointless to begin with, just because it's like, hey, guess what? You don't have to pick either one of them. You can actually do both of them within a training session, and in fact, that's what a lot of people tend to like to do. Me personally, I'm not a huge fan of what people would call the traditional compound motions. That's just my personal bias based off my own experience. I like to create situations where I know exactly which muscle is going to fatigue first and fail first because I find it more easy to calculate volume that way, right? So that's a potential additional upside to the isolation stuff is you really have a, a better idea of like, okay, what exactly is going to be the rate limiter in this exercise? And how can I count this as a set, right? Like a set of triceps extensions is just a set for the triceps, but what is a set of bench press where it's like, ah, oh, my triceps are kind of, is that half a set? Is it a quarter of a set? Is it three fourths of a set, right? So again, advantages to this, but then again, advantages to this is like, you could, let's say, save time, right? You, uh, if you're in a position to um, stimulate a lot of things and potentially see a high growth response from that, just based on your training age, right? This is something that because you are blending a bunch of different things together, you're sort of performing kitchen sink exercises, shotgun exercises, you're able to see, to reap those benefits that you might at a later point with isolation exercises, um, because again, that stimulus is so fresh, so new, and you see, um, you know, growth responses regardless of how specific the exercise is to begin with. So I think this conversation really just needs to come down to time and place. You know, are you trying to save time? Are you really limited on time? Or do you have plenty of time? Do you like the feeling of doing big, heavy compound movements? Or do you like the feeling of really isolating a muscle, getting a really sweet pump just in that one place? Do you like a combination of those things? There's no right or wrong answer here. Ultimately, all of the variables that I listed, and there are probably plenty more, are relevant to consider in addition to just the fact that like training is something that hopefully most people should enjoy. At least if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you're someone who likes training. So you don't need to just sort of follow the advice of one guru or another guru or even me, right? You just need to sort of think about like, hey, what are the benefits and trade-offs of each of these strategies? Does it make sense for this particular context on this particular day for me? And do I enjoy what I'm doing? Because ultimately, if you're not enjoying what you're doing, are you going to be able to do this whole lifting thing until you're 60, 70, 80, 90, maybe 100? Who knows? Uh, I think enjoyment is a big part of that. Are you someone that wants to be able to target any muscle in your body when you're lifting, but you also don't give a shit about complicated anatomy and biomechanics? If you are, then this is the perfect ebook for you. The Target Any Muscle ebook is not really an ebook. It's more like a lifetime cheat sheet guide to lifting. You need a total of zero understanding of anatomy and biomechanics to understand this material. And that's because every chapter is full of tons of different diagrams and very visual, simple explanations about how to set up an exercise for any muscle. And in addition, every chapter functions as a standalone guide, so you can simply click on the table of contents and navigate to any muscle group that you're training on any given day. Every single chapter includes visuals of how to stretch any muscle, how to shorten any muscle, how to load any muscle, and then how to stabilize your body so that you can train that muscle appropriately. And in addition, at the end of every chapter, there's a training FAQ to address commonly asked questions and a full video lecture summarizing each chapter with me and my skeleton model to demonstrate. This is meant to function as a cheat sheet for life. This be the last product that you ever purchase about how to lift. I hope you all enjoy the guide. Happy gains.